and this is the threat. And this year, on World Environment Day, the ecosystem restoration is a theme declared by the UN. Now, what is ecosystem? The ecosystem is a geographical area where plants, animals, other species, as well as the weather and topography, interact and they generate a bubble of life. Uh, I will try to concentrate on a urban ecology. Urban ecology is defined, defined as a one sub-discipline where a biology and ecology combine together. Continuous is the phenomena is an interaction between a biophysical forces and socio-economical forces of the cities. So we want to restore this urban ecosystem. So as we all know, this restoration is a renewal or a revival, or we are re-establishing a formal or original condition or a normal condition. If we talk about the urban ecosystem, there are various principal subsystems like hydrological system, climate system, atmospheric system, energy system, nutrient and material cycling system, economic system. So these are the various ecological system available in the urban atmosphere. And all these things has been altered by our human activity. Sometimes we feel proud or we are happy that doing less bad is not good enough. As I warn you, if we are losing in each three seconds this much forest. So in addition to minimize the harm to the environment, now a time to restore the ecosystem. So how we can restore the ecosystem, either repairing and replanting the wetland, land, eradicating the invasive species, replacing tough, tough grass from the native species, planting rain gardens to absorb rainwater, monitoring pond and lake habitats. So for restoration, now in urban area, some research is to be taken. So this restoration research is very complex in urban systems. There is a socio-ecological metabolism. There is a land use. There is a land uh, landscapes. The governance is one of the part, various communications. These are the major issues. And this all requires research. So, socio-ecological metabolism. So, what is that metabolism? So, the activity in city associated with the flow of energy uses. We use lots of energy either in consuming food or driving a scooter. So, which is a generation. And what is a consumption? That is a metabolism of a city. So it is closely associated with the social perspective. If we talk a few Eastern European countries, so they go for a non-motorized vehicle. So their footsteps are low. So the social perspective is also one of the important things. One of the very interesting data is, as per one of the research in 2015, uh, 6 megajoule, which is equivalent to around 1.6 kilowatt energy. So you can, you can visualize the 1.6 kilowatt of energy required for each dollar of activity. So when you spend one dollar, you are consuming 1.6 kilowatt. So we need various footprint analysis of all these factors. And modern city, as we know, they are the centers of consumption. 
we talk about a vancouver so in 2006 vancouver needed 36 times of its size to balance their ecology so the metabolism of vancouver city requires 36 six time additional area not to harm the further to the ecological footprint so we have to go for a green infrastructure green fuel green jobs so now in case of what is the way ahead so improving the quality of urban green infrastructure by restoring a broad variety of different ecosystem types is needed to facilitate the biodiversity conservation ecosystem services climate change adaptation urban ecological restoration and rehabilitation span has a very multi pan dimension from light to strong intervention in some places required large to small patches has to be required for intervention and in historic to novel ecosystem so city planning at the end city planning for its part needs to protect city planning needs to protect and even enlarge urban green blade bells urban green fingers thus ensuring the corridor for the production of flow of air fresh air to to mitigate the negative effects of climate change and multifunctional this green space net, networks for the biodiversity and also for the recreational activities also so this calls for the development of novel concept now it is a high time we have to go for a development but with a novel concept how to preserve how to restore our ecological system and for that we have to strengthen the research efforts we have to put very various practical implementation flagship projects and we have to incorporate the interdisciplinary team so if you want to survive a urban ecological then the ecologists the landscapers and city planner particularly the city urban planner has to play a great role and there are few good example where not in urban area but ecological restoration has been happen in maharashtra in western ghat it has been happen in lantana in jim corbett park or there is a biodiversity recovery of sola forest also so uh, i think both uh, key speaker will enlighten us on this world environment day how to restore our ecology while come while keeping our pace with our nature also thank you thank you now i request kapoor saab to kindly take over and moderate the proceedings and also introduce the speakers Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, at the outset, I welcome uh, both the key speakers uh, who agreed on our request to participate in today's webinar. Uh, as we all know, that it's almost 48, 49 years we are celebrating World Environment Day. The objective. formulated by united nations to celebrate this day as world environment day was to create awareness among common people about the environment and even in almost the five decades that has not happened not only in india but across the world and our actions we we are acting against the nature and which resulting into so many natural calamities that is the reason we have chosen our two speakers 
who have worked their research area is in the field and they have worked uh, in the field of environment uh, for a long time and both the learner speakers they uh, i extend thanks on behalf of itpi so first uh, i will request dr ds pande uh, to give his presentation dr pande is former professor and chairman academy of scientific and innovative research government of india uh, he did his graduation from iit kharagpur and his post graduation and phd all his education from iit kharagpur was bengal thereafter he joined niri nagpur as a scientist in 1987 where he worked on new and innovative concepts related to environment management dealing with the issues like temporal risk gradients and its environmental applications his present area of interest include application of accretion of data and modulation and environmentally valuable viable engineering which is called as adam and eve uh, he has published about 100 papers in national and international journals conferences seminars as the first science secretary of niri and the first coordinator of csir climate change program he has guided and motivated many students for their phd and masters program in the field of environment management i am not taking much of the time because everyone is keen to hear from him his experience and his research work uh, in the field of environment management so i request uh, dr pandey to give his presentation and once again thanks to him for giving us the time to participate in this webinar of itpi dr pandey okay thank you kapoor sir i am so delighted that i have met you and some some alumni from iit kharagpur it is so heartening to know almost i have achieved my mission of life so i am i have left with nothing whenever i meet some friends and they are the be, i mean the be, better achievements in life so he has uh, off his video so i can't see his face but he is there in my mind meshram ji mr khodankar patel ji and all dignitaries from institution of uh, uh town planners uh i am sh directly sharing my screen if you allow uh host disabled participants screen sharing uh there is some message like that is coming please share it again okay so uh i feel sorry that i missed your last conference which, which was in wisec and professor kapse from vnit had so gladly invited me i really feel sorry i apologize to him on the screen i saw his name was also displayed so probably hearing my lecture so i must start thank him because he is the first introduction to the institute of town planners from me uh, from my side so i missed that but if i knew that you people are there i would have probably rushed despite the lockdown because so such nice faces i can see on the screen at the moment when i uh, you are all town planners so i thought i should uh, put a title like need for rural planners in addition to urban planners and reforms in our education system why i will tell you education is more important than anything else for uh, environmental preservation in due course of time when i started uh, my career at uh, 
National Environmental Engineering Research Institute way back in 1987. We had a mm -hmm. civil engineer in our institution, Professor P. Khanna. He was the director of that institute. And knowing that I had worked on modeling issues, the job which he gave me was to develop a computer simulation model for a district ecosystem based on ecological and economic sustainability. The thing for which I just now 30. Uh, 33rd year for me and still the country or the globe which is struggling to get that economic and ecological sustainability but that was the job to me, developing a computer simulation model for a district district planning based on ecological and economic sustainability now the other area which i was uh, uh, coordinating that time i was i was coordinator of csir uh, climate change program. Initially, it was known as global change program. And I don't know how many of you were acquainted with that. There was a term called international geosphere biosphere program to integrate all the disciplines which Mr. Patel has already covered in his lecture. While I was hearing him, I thought there is nothing left for my lecture today because almost he had covered all the uh, essential elements of uh, ecosystem restoration. So the first job which I was doing was a, to develop a computer simulation model for predator-prey relationship. Predator-prey relationship is you have some foxes in the forest and some rabbits in the same forest. Five foxes, say odd 50 rabbits in the forest. Foxes survive on the rabbits. They need rabbits for their survival. So they were eating rabbits and by the time they eat away some rabbits by the process of biological reproduction, some more rabbits are produced. And there was always a balance between the population of foxes and the rabbits. One day it so happened that the foxes got under the temptation of glamorization. They also got greedy. So the, they thought rabbits are so uh, fleshy, they are so tasty and all. Why not eat them away? in a single step. So they ate away all the foxes. This was a computer simulation Marxist exercise. I was developing differential equations for this kind of a phenomena. I'm verbally describing it to you. So they ate away all the rabbits. Now no rabbits left in the forest. As a result, after a few months, even the foxes became extinct. They could not also survive. The moral of the story is in ecology, in the ecosystem, whosoever has really engineered that ecosystem or the earth system or the solar system has maintained a balance between different species. And if we disturb that balance, not only one species suffers, all the species which are dependent on the population of that species, they also suffer. Now, the relationship between the forestry ecosystem, of course, I've already said so many football grounds have come and forests have gone and all that. So the relationship between forestry and industrialization is almost like the relationship between foxes and the rabbits. So now if for industrialization, if we are going to sacrifice all the forests we have, I will tell you we will not left with the inputs, the resources for the industrialization. And our story will become like the story of those greedy foxes. Anyway, why we should Worry, worry about climate change. You can see in this diagram, climate change is related with ozone layer depletion, biodiversity loss, freshwater decline, desertification, land degradation, and through different pathways, it finally affects human health. We are paying that price in coronavirus also. And if you ask me, actually it is the disturbance in that predator-prey relationship which has led to the uh, upcoming of this virus, which is troubling us today. The entire ecosystem predator-prey relationships, species dependence on each other has been disturbed. Now, naturally, I think you will also say you are urban planners, but you will also must be feeling in your heart that urbanization has really created the mess with which we have to deal with. And I really feel pained. If we have World Environment Day only once in a year, that means one by three, 365 times we are paying the respect to the environment. If you really compare 
the respect to the environment which I am giving you, just compare the budget of Ministry of Defense and compare the budget of Ministry of Environment and you will know how much importance we are giving to waging war against each other and how much importance we really are giving to environmental protection. I need not tell you much further than that, but we have all the answers ready for why we are suffering the way we are suffering. Urban, sorry, urbanization has long been associated with human development and progress, but in recent studies, many problems have come out of this urbanization. We have urban sprawl, overcrowding, the problems related with housing, unemployment, slums and squatter settlements, transportation. It's one of the major polluters, transportation, not only on roads, the way vehicles are manufactured, where they are manufactured, their components, the way they are brought, export and import, the ecological footprint, which Professor, uh, Mr. Patel was referring to, the major component in ecological footprint are from exports and imports. And if we really want to reduce ecological footprint, we should control our export and import. And that was, this philosophy was embedded in Kantian principles, if, you, if we all remember. Become Atmanirbhar, which we are talking about Atmanirbharta. For Atmanirbharta, it is very important that we reduce our export and we reduce our import. The moment we do that, we will take few steps in the direction of sustainability. And if we are too much dependency, vaccine problem, too much dependence on other countries and all. So what kind of problem we are facing? Import and export are the biggest polluters. If we can reduce that, then we will have a better sustainability. Then we have water pollution problem, sewer problem, mm -hmm. solid waste disposal problem, urban crimes and problems of urban pollution. Now you can see in the photograph, I need not speak on this photograph. They will explain you what kind of problems urbanization has created and how well we have planned or we are planning for that. So these are the urban sprawling. Now what are the problems in rural in India? Pro there are problems related to people, their health. You saw them on the TV every day, they are showing that in the rural area, hospitals are there but they have been converted into cow sheds or fellow sheds and sometimes for pig rearing also. So this is the way we are doing health infrastructure development in our rural India. Then all because of poverty, illiteracy, unemployment. If you really look with a mic microscope, you do a microscopic analysis, you will find that in our country we do not have economic problem. It's a wealthy country. You look at so many wealthy people we have in this our country. On, an, on the other side, we have people who are struggling for 100 rupees, 1000 rupees. What kind of con country we have? It's a distribution of money, which is the problem. We are a very wealthy country. Once upon a time, we used to be called. Lot of wealth is there. So many people are there who have a lot of wealth. But the distribution of money has not been properly done. And that distribution of money is highly responsible for the faulty planning we are having in our rural India and urban India also. And that, of, of course, leads to illiteracy, unemployment. There are no schools in the rural area, unemployment, homelessness, crime and violence, because money is not there. And I say, like, in physics, we used to learn that we have used to have thermoelectric voltage. So you have a wire at a very high temperature, you have a wire at a lower temperature, you connect them and there will be a thermoelectric and there will be a voltage which would be generated. Similarly, if you have such economic gradients, people with having trillions of rupees and dollars, and in the same society, even at a global level, you have people struggling for 100 and 1000 rupees. If you want to connect them, you will have that voltage generation and that voltage generation is crime and violence has resulted because the person is saying that on one hand people have so much of money and that fellow is just struggling for two meals in a day or maybe a single meal in a day. Then problems related to agriculture, small and fragmented land holdings, unavailability of various inputs, water availability is a problem, irrigation is a problem, mechanization is a problem. When I was in Vienna, actually the train which you see behind me in the photo photograph, when I was in Vienna, I see in the European countries, the divide between rural and uh, urban areas is not 
that distinct as it is in India. The rural uh, Europe is almost as much developed as urban Europe is. Such, such is their planning. We, we can have similar kind of planning in India also that will reduce the economic gradient which I was talking about. And economic gradient happens to be the reason behind most of the social malices with which we are afflicted these days. So we have inadequate marketing and storage facilities. Sometimes I provide a solution. Instead of having a malls in urban areas, you better develop malls in the rural areas. It will automatically develop rural India and their connectivity with, with our urban environment. Then the problems related to infrastructure, road infrastructure, they are not there. Actually, yesterday only I gave an interview to one newspaper and I told them, unless until we have planned our rural area well, we don't actually acquire the qualification for developing our cities. There is no point in talking about urban development when our rural India is hungry for hospitals. What kind of planning we have? So road infrastructure is not there, connectivity is not there, electricity is not there, water supply and sewer, I think they, they would not be knowing, they would not be familiar with these terms also, which we use in IIT, Kharagpur, in other IITs and in our all academic institutions. Finally, unemployment again, homelessness, crime and violence. Problems of urbanization, I have narrated to you earlier, but I will again speak about them. Some of the major health problems resulting from urbanization include poor nutrition, pollution-related health conditions and communicable diseases, poor sanitation and housing conditions, and related health conditions. These have direct impacts on individual quality of life while straining public health systems and resources. That's the example we are seeing these days on TV. National and international researchers and policymakers have explored various strategies. Research on solutions for mega cities has been going on since the early 1990s, but we have actually not been able to solve many of the problems. These studies have been concluded that pollution, unreliable electricity, and non-functioning infrastructure are initiatives. It is one thing to get the resources. We saw this problem with the oxygen cylinders. Just because you have oxygen cylinders, does not give you the guarantee you will be able to survive. The management of that cylinder is required. The regulation of the cylinder is required. The pressure of oxygen supply is required. The flow is required. Just because we acquire an infrastructure, make a building, we really do not achieve everything. Air pollution, quality of water in cities, congestion, disaster management issues are some of those burning issues and which are glaring us in the face in the present circumstances very vividly how urban and rural planning are interdependent. Until the conditions in rural areas improve, populations will continue to migrate to urban settings. Given the challenges that rural development poses, the root causes are unlikely to be addressed in the near future. Therefore, governments and development agencies should concentrate on adapting to the challenge of urban planning and reduce unplanned urbanization. Some examples of policies and practices that should be considered include policies that consider whole of life journeys, the life cycle assessment, accessible employment, community participation, mobility issues, policies addressing urban environmental issues such as planned urban spaces and taxes on the use of vehicle. When I started studying ecology, there is a very famous ecologist, international ecologist, Odom. That was the book, Basic Ecology. If people have not come across this, I think your institute should procure that book and it should be circulated for reading. Once you read, if you have gone through the book of Odom on ecology, basic ecology, it is almost like Gita. It is a spiritual book when I start, because I have read Gita also, when I started reading basic ecology, so such an integrated picture of environmental management is given. And then we will realize that how all the species on the earth are interconnected and why <coughs> before troubling any single species, be it microorganism, we have troubled microorganisms sitting on the bat. That is a theory going on. And that has troubled, troubled the whole global economy. So before troubling any small species also, you must 100 times think over it. And I really appreciate my education was also from Jain school, the kind of you, you know, the Jain dharma. They were so enlightened. They knew that this kind of problem is coming. 
are, they had started wearing masks in time immemorial. Microorganisms also they don't want to hurt because they don't want to hurt even small microorganisms. So we have to be very care, care, careful. Here we are cutting thousands of trees and so many organisms and um, species dependent on the survival of the forest. So uh, policies addressing urban environmental issues such as planned urban space and ta taxes on the use of vehicles greater cooperative planning between rural and urban regions to improve food security, social protection, and universal health coverage to reduce wealth disparity among urban dwellers. <clears throat> this is the model I was village ecosystem and structural modeling approach. That computer simulation model, which I was talking about, which I developed way back, I think it's a 1990 paper. So, Village model looks like that. You have forest ecosystem, you have agriculture ecosystem, you have food system, and they're all interlinked. If you disturb any of them, it's like ecosystem, actually we are talking of ecosystem restoration. The truth behind ecosystem is ecosystem almost works like integrated electronic circuit. Some component is works like transistor, some component works like oscillator, some component works like already it has been proved that forest has a role of stabilizer in the environment. Some component is a stabilizer, amplifier and like that. Now, just imagine an integrated circuit, a small connectivity also if you disrupt, your computer will not work. Just a small component. And I will give you a further simpler example. You have urban electricity distribution and you have a fuse wire in your house, the fuse wire runs off, it goes off, you lose the electricity. Now, no matter where, you, you can put fuse wire in other areas and it will not restore the electricity in your area. The electrical distribution in your ecosystem is also dependent on a small fuse wire. So maybe an ecosystem component looks very small to you, but that small component also may be such an important, must maybe playing such an important role in the ecosystem. And you must honor that role and you must not disturb that. So, like in vegetable, you see there is a ratio, I call it ecological ratio, which should be honored. In vegetables, we know we have masala, we have salt, we have oil and there is a ratio which has to be followed. Now, I put 10 milligram of uh, salt in vegetable, it makes it tasty. Now, does it mean that if I put 20 milligram, it will make it two times tastier? It doesn't happen. The vegetable will reach a stage where we will like, not like to eat it. Similar is the case with the ratio of industrialization, commercialization, agriculture, forestry, aquaculture and all. Industrialization is good. A certain amount of development is required. We must have it. Otherwise, we will go into the primitive ages. But its role is like salt. Some few milligrams will make your life interesting. But now if you go on adding salt to your life, uh, vegetables uh, or to life, it will make it miserable. So we have to really learn to, to honor the ratio of Industrialization, I call it ICAFR ratio. Industrialization, commercialization, agriculture and aquaculture, forestry and residential activities. This should form an integral component of our urban planning as well as our rural planning. Now my uh, presentation is basically under the following head headings. What has been done? How is it is useful? How did we, did we start initially? In the beginning, what kinds of problems arose in the following areas? Methodology, data availability and analysis, interpretation and modeling, references, value verifications, and cross-references. Cross-checking and validation of initial results. Then we did a lot of modifications in what we started with. So my own contributions were basically made in the following areas. Ecosystem health risk assessment, human health risk assessment, climate change, ecological and carbon footprinting, ecological economics and ecosystem services, phytoremediation in environmental water demands, atmospheric and biospheric interactions, 
environmental. Recently, I was heading the division, the CCSD division, which Kapoor Sahib was talking about. It was known as climate change and skilling division because the skill, the skill development has become a priority area of, of the government. So we started a division called skill development division. And so environmental awareness, event management, training and skill development became our priority trust areas. And then finally, I would like to tell you the solutions for most of our environmental problems lie because we do not have environment health, health cards. For no district, for no village ecosystem, for, for no urban ecosystem, we have <coughs> environmental health cards. Environmental health cards, they need to be developed for our urban area as well as for our rural areas also. Now, the key questions today are climate resilient economic should ideally deal with the following key questions. How can different countries and states strengthen and protect their economic performance while dealing with climate change and environmental management? How can scientific and technological innovations in terms of climate change research be translated into direct action plans, which are socially relevant? What are the direct economic consequences of extreme weather events, rising sea levels, etc.? What kinds of socio-political and administrative reforms are needed so as to take care of air, water, and soil quality? Energy security amongst all the cross sections belonging to different segments of socio-economic areas. How do we build smart cities and smart villages, which are not only digitally smart, but also smart from sustainability point of view. How do we develop region-specific environmental management plans which appropriately and adequately take care of carbon emission potentials and ecological footprints? This is our institute. Some of you who would like to see where, from where I retired, Niri, your CSIR Niri. Now you see the way pollutants are being emitted in the environment. This is the state of air environment, polluted emissions from natural resources, so the natural sources from cities, they're called area sources of pollution, then mobile sources like transportation, airplanes, cars, trucks, buses, motorcycles, etc. Then you have transportation of all these chemicals, the way they are being generated, constantly being there, they are being generated, and day in, in and day out they are generated. Now how to deal with them? This diagram is just to show that what kind of uncertainties can be involved in dealing with the emissions, their dispersion, their transformation, their deposition on various ecosystems. See, any ecosystem will survive well only when whatever is the pollutant emission should be sequestered. Should the, so the sources should, should match the sink. Once we have emission sources exceeding the emissions uh, sinks, pollutant sinks, then we will have a problem and that's the problem we are facing. Now, when you go into the ecosystem, uh, aquatic ecosystem, that's water related ecosystems, then you see the kind of interactions which are there, what kind of modeling and management exercise they need to be done. Trees are very important. A tree is just not a tree. We think most of the people have the feeling that you just plant some tree, you have take, taken care of environment. It is not as simple as that. Which tree to plant where, in what density, what, in what kind of profile, that has to be studied. And trees like human beings also have families. Some trees, when I was doing carrying capacity studies for Dune Valley and I went to the Dehradun area, I saw there were two trees, Tal and Rohini. Always, wherever you find Saar, Rohini will be there. So their association was almost like a husband-wife association. And then many microorganisms, the rhizospheric mycorrhiza and all that, they survive because of these tree families which are there. So whenever we do tree plantation, we must identify which family does it belong to. Along with that tree, what kind of other other associated ecosystems components should be there so that the tree survives well and we survive well. The importance of the tree is here. It removes pollutants, air pollution, then it reduces erosion, the soil erosion. So it, it, it's the rhizospheric zone, the root zone it is called. It, it controls the soil pollution. 
and the root zone also controls water pollution. So a tree is a complete environment treatment plant in itself. Leaves, they remove air pollution and roots, they remove soil and water pollution. But to what extent? Like human beings, it's like that elastic and plastic limit. We can hold 10 kgs bag, 20 kgs bag, but if someone puts a quintal bag on our shoulders, can we really do it? So that's the burden which trees and ecosystems are facing. Because, uh, because of our continuously and exponentially rising emission potential. Then you have emissions from various facilities, and these are the quantification. From you see the largest contribution comes from industries and transportation. Then you have water pollution through farms, lawns, and golf courses, residential neighborhoods, and urban streets, construction sites, and <laughs> deforested areas. So you have fertilizer, herbicides problem, nutrients problem, salt on winter roads, industrial waste and toxic chemicals, eroded soil, oil spills, acid drainage. And these are, this is another simplified how contaminant get into our water supply. The waste from manufacturing plants, then runoff from agricultural pesticides, gasoline leaks, animal waste and dead animals, drugs flushed into water supply, sewage and waste runoff. And this is the state of our environment. Actually, my lecture was not needed. If I had shown you these photographs in the beginning, much of my, I mean, there is nothing much to speak. How to restore, the challenge today is how to restore this ecosystem back to our natural system. So see how challenging the job is. Then we have uh, surface water pollution problems, sewage, industrial effluents, syn synthetic detergents, agrochemicals, oil, waste, heat. Then soil pollution, domestic waste, agriculture waste, industrial waste, excretory products, and salination. And this is the state of affairs. This is the ecological footprints. So you can see football ground at least gives some entertainment. But if you have grounds of this kind, what kind of life we are living? And I say that if ecosystem is like a human body, our entire body, we may be as handsome and tall as Amitabh Bachchan is. But if a, there is a single scar on our face or anywhere in the body, how bad it looks. And we have so many scars on our earth system. And you can see that I'm just showing you a few slides. In all the cities, these problems are there. Pollution harms organisms in many ways. Air pollution degrades forest ecosystems. Water pollution impairs fish and amphibians. Agricultural runoff harms terrestrial and aquatic species. Toxins, garbage, oil, and chemical impacts different organisms. Damage to wildlife and ecosystems caused by pollution can be very severe, but it is less than the damage caused by habitat alterations in invasive species. Ultimately, what you find is, actually it's the land use planning which is responsible for all this. The land use alloca allocation between the industrial activities, residential activities, commercial activities, agricultural activities, forestry activities, once land use planning takes care of that ICAFR ratio which I was talking about, you will have most of these ecosystems restored. restored. But who bothers about it? No one is bothered. No one would actually understand that it is the land use planning which is responsible so much for environmental pollution. You see landfill areas in different countries, a lot of dubious distinctions many cities have that is shown in the slides. So ecological footprint and carbon footprint must reduce. Our ecosystems should not have scars of the kind I was talking about like these leaves have here. Stomata is a very important organ, and that is what does photosynthesis, and that is what reduces carbon dioxide from the air. So if you want to control climate change problem, then we should really worry about stomata and the health of uh, forest ecosystems. Now, regions behind environmental pollution. There are intensities of activities in different sectors, industrial, commercial, and residential, et cetera. When it comes to proper scientific understanding of climate change, it is pertinent to mention that the main regulators of temperature and humidity are carbon and hydrological cycles, which are the major biogeochemical cycles. 
these cycles in turn are intertwined with many other micro and micro cycles such as nitrogen phosphorus calcium and magnesium cycles they are just like electric currents i told you that ecosystem works like integrated circuits and these cycles the biogeochemical cycles are nothing but different kinds of currents which are flowing in the environment all these cycles are in turn controlled by ecological food webs they are dependent on food webs food chains and predator prey relationships which we have altered so badly i gave you only the fox and rabbit story but there are many stories related to wolves also and we can look into those kind of issues microscopically once these relationships are disturbed perturbed and hampered they in turn hamper the rate of synchronization of biogeochemical cycles predator prey relationships are maintained and managed by land use patterns i told you so finally land use is very important for example how much land should be under industry commerce residence forestry aquaculture like cnp ratio maintains and manages the icr ratio this is the biogeochemical cycle pictorially you can see this is the hydrological cycle this is the hydrological cycle and hydrological cycle and carbon cycle are interlinked if you disturb any of them because of the photo synthesis part of the forest ecosystem is the linking zone so if you disturb any of them they will be disturbed and if carbon cycle is disturbed uh, hydrological cycle is disturbed then that will disturb nitrogen phosphorus so it's a cascading effect and you can see the main problem lies here electricity and heat generation so if we really want to find a solution we have to control this sector so much i Now this problem is simply like, yeah. I hope uh, I am not exceeding the time. How much time, Pradankar ji? I have now, so I will wrap it up accordingly. Pradankar ji, कितना समय और होगा? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, Pradankar ji, कितना समय और होगा? So that I will accordingly. Mm, I will accordingly uh, give respect to my different slides. I will wrap it up then. Kitna hoga time abhi? Ah, uh, you have uh, time up to twelve fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Twelve fifteen to ho gaya. Ah, uh, so uh, you can uh, wind up in another five ten minutes because okay, okay. your presentation is uh, really interesting. Okay, okay. <laughs> then it is, it is keeping the uh, participants captive. So you okay. you may. Uh, wind up in another yeah, 10 5 10 minutes probably okay okay theek hai i will i will i will now we stop only on very interesting uh, slides so some simple analysis every cell living cell depends on cnp ratio similarly the ecosystem depends on industrialization commercialization and residential oh. ratio and we should honor that then we have oh. all told you the imbalance between emissions oh. and as to hello to be taken care of so climate change land use man management and environmental health cards are very important these are ecosystem services and economic terms like patel sa was talking about they have been economically quantified by world renowned um, scientist costanja that economic value different ecosystem have in terms of ecosystem services now this slide is slightly looking different now anything the the essence of ecology is anything which is happening on the earth is be, basically because of the driving force is sun solar energy so anything any abiotic process living process or non living process is being driven by solar energy so sun and earth interact and all biotic and abi abiotic processes go on now one question which has been hitting my mind for past 30 years if we are produced because of the interaction between sun and earth we have an energy called life energy which distinguishes us from inert objects we are different from tables and chairs and computers because we have something called life energy now if we apply law of conservation of energy this life energy should come from somewhere then i learned in ecology that anything which is there with us or with is because of sun and earth 
Now, can two non-living beings produce living beings like us? So this defies a normal logic. So in all probability, sun and earth, they are living beings. Are we really respecting them as living beings? And this concept is there in Mahabharata also. See, Karna, Kunti's another name is Prithvi, Pritha. So Prithvi, Dharti, she is Dharti. And Karn was born through her interaction with the sun. So solar radiation and Prithvi, Karn was born. I call Karn, he was the best ecological product we have on the earth. Now, coming back to Kodankarji's need and greed principles, many a times, probably we know the solutions, but we, we are helpless. In, in my childhood, I used to watch these insects. When you light a lamp, so many millions of in insects will come. They will thrive. They will sit on the tube light or whatever light you have. Next morning, all of them are dead. This is going on for billions of years. But the insects coming towards the light today have not learned anything from the insects which died yesterday. Similar is the fate with the, of the ants, the jaggery. You put a piece of jaggery on the table, billions of ants will come. They would get glued to the jaggery and in no time they would be dead. But the ants coming today towards the jaggery refuse to learn anything from the ants which were lost yesterday. Ecological engineering example is also like that. Probably many of the solutions are known to us. We know that cycling is good from air pollution point of view, from our health point of view also. But how many of us are really doing it, want to do it? And I already told you the fox and rabbit story. And this, another story I will tell you, there was a lady sitting under a chabutra tha, a lighted chabutra tha or bagal mein dusra chabutra tha, jahan pe darkness tha, wahan ka lamp buj gaya tha. Now, one lady, one chabutra par baith, बैठ के ये इस तरह से सिलाई कर रही थी और अचानक उसका निडल गुम हो गया कुछ देर के पास वो निडल घूमने लगी एक लड़का वहां से गुजरा तो लेडी ने पूछा कि आंटी आप क्या ढूंढ रही हैं बेटा मेरे मेरे मैं सिलाई कर रही थी मेरी निडल गुम हो गई और उसको ढूंढने का प्रयास कर रही तो आंटी मैं आपकी मदद करूं क्या हां बेटा कर सको तो करो फिर दोनों वो जहां पे लाइट था उस चबूतरे के चारों तरफ घूमने लगे उस देर के बाद बच्चे को ध्यान है उसने पूछा आंटी एक्चुअली एग्जैक्टली exactly आपकी सुई कहां पे गिरी थी आंटी ने बोला उस तरफ इशारा किया जिस चबूतरे के पास लैंप नहीं था अंधेरा था वहां पे बोला बेटी मैं बेटे वहां पे जब मैं सिलाई कर रही थी तो वहां पे मेरी निडल गुम हो गई तो बच्चे ने पूछा कि फिर आंटी जब आपकी निडल वहां गुम हुई तो आप उसे ढूंढ यहां क्यों रही हैं बोले बेटा वहां तो बिजल प्रकाश ही नहीं है तो वहां कैसे ढूंढ पाऊंगी जहां प्रकाश वहां Problems are Indian. We have problems of India. We are seeking solutions in USA. Will we ever find a solution? So most of the time, we actually do not find the solutions from where they have originated. We have to locate the origins of those problems and then settle the problems there, find the solutions there. The story of environment and climate change is almost like a story of an elephant and these six blind men which I think many of us must have read it. So every blind man catches one particular portion of the elephant and thinks that is what is the environment, that is what is climate change, and starts struggling with it. One has to, real ecologist, real climate change scientist, has to understand the integration of all these components and then see that he has to deal with the entire elephant. And really we have the environmental management problems and climate change problem as gigantic as the elephant looks. <clears throat> the other simple example is like a train. Ecosystem is almost like a train. There are many compartments. There is an engine, they're connected with each other. You just remove a vacuum connection from one push to another. The whole train will create. So ecosystem is, a, you cannot treat the components of the ecosystem in isolation. They're all connected like a train and if you have a small minor problem also aberration somewhere, the train will derail like this. 
and i have already told you ecosystem is like integrated circuits and finally it is really like the various biogeochemical cycles are nothing but the blood vessels flowing in our body like this many components of the like lungs forestry is our lungs the trees are our earth, are the lungs of the ecosystem they play the same role as these components in a human body plays so we have to learn to honor in life we have to decide already you have patel sahab has talked about football ground so by coincidence this football ground is here life we have to decide whether we really want to enjoy life or we want to kill each other out of competition now if we really want to enjoy life then we have to live in symbiosis we have to feel that if i have billion dollars with me i have to also see that my brother does not die of hunger my neighbor doesn't die of hunger i can be smiling only when morning when i come out of my house my neighbor also smiles so to in order to keep my neighbor probably i have to keep him as much wealthy as i i also am probably this kind of thing, thinking if it dawns on many of those dawns probably we will have a better society today so time to voluntarily give earth its restoration time and i think last year only i had spoken to one newspaper about eco restoration i have already covered the essential elements of that and i think see when you talk of human development index that's the last i think i will wrap it up human development index is dependent on the following factors your economy your employment your education and health and finally if you see all four of their they are interlinked because you will have employment only when you are educated and you will have good health only when you have good economy and you will have economy only when you have employment so means education is the most important driving force so whenever someone asks me for a solution for environmental pollution problem i told them the i tell them the following the solution actually we have a ministry of environment and forest and climate change to deal with specifically the problems of environment and climate change but the real solutions lie in two other ministries ministry of defense and ministry of human resources and development why ministry of defense because you see i already compared when we are investing so much most of the products which are being used for defense actually they are carcinogenic products and if we can prevent that carcinogenesis city a toxicity if all the countries on in the world sit down and decide that because they are today better developed than they were yesterday that means they are better educated and if they are better educated they should have less inclination for fighting so they should stop fighting and instead of increasing their defense budget by some amount every year they go on decreasing it by 5% i will tell you enormous problems of environmental pollution would be solved just 5% reduction by every country in their defense sector but this will not happen because our education system is not appropriate our education system is inculcating a strange competitive sense in people's mind so unless until we change our education pattern unless until this concepts of environmental preservation environmental protection environmental management issues related with climate change they are embedded in the young children very little would we be able to achieve so to reverse the trend the solution lies in ministry of human resources and development that is in our education system so that's all there are so many other slides i think some other time when we meet i will cover them cuz i really feel uh, bad well, i'm not so good at giving uh, online lectures i think i like personal touch i like to interact interactive lectures are always better but uh, the constraints are such i have also devised the solution providing ministries i told you ministry of environment forest and climate change ministry of defense ministry of human resources so there is a need for introducing a course on sustainability and green management so these are the course details so some paper i had on Ada, adam and eve course i was talking about looking at climate change and its socio economic and ecological implications through biogeochemical cycle lens and adam 
that is accretion of data and modulation. It is almost like environmental analytics, if environmentally viable engineering estimates analysis. Then I recently produced a, one, published a paper on climatance and carbon tax mechanism, a case study of Indian coastal ecosystem. This is a very recent paper. During lockdown period, I wrote this paper because I have so many papers to read and so much time was available. Then we have synergistic impacts of climate change and environmental pollution. Studies required for impact minimization and environmental management. So, conclusion, it is high time that academic institutions now engage in research avenues which help in finally finding the solutions which are socio-economically relevant and solutions for climate change related problems. The present paper is an attempt in this direction. System psychology works very much in line with the concepts of species specific, ecosystem and process specific processes. Arthur? Yeah, I think we can conclude here. This is some work for migration, uh, migratory work, workers. So finally, it is the way you look at any problem. A matter of pain can suddenly become a matter of pleasure. So thanks a lot. Thanks for inviting me. I really enjoyed this session and I really feel bad I missed Vizac's session. Next time I will not miss it. If people, Nice people like you, people are there. Thank you so much. And uh, just to, to make situation lighter because environment is a serious topic. A topic. Einstein never had to dress well. When Einstein's wife told him to dress properly, when, when going to the first conference, he said, why should I, no one knows me there. Then he was invited as a chief guest. So then his wife said, now at least you are invited as a chief guest, you should wear something glamorous and then go. I said, now everyone knows me, so why should I worry about the dress? <laughs> so this is a lighter one. And with this lighter note, I will end my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Kapoor Saab, you may like to... Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Pandey. Uh, really, uh, we enjoyed it. And I hope all the participants, uh, they have also enjoyed your presentation because I got few questions. I have noted down from the chat box, but we'll take up uh, these questions after the second presentation. Okay, no, no, no problem. be with us. No problem. Uh, now, now I will request uh, Dr. Rajesh Kumar uh, for making his presentation. Before he starts, I would like to give his brief introduction. Uh, Dr. Kumar completed his MSc uh, and PhD from Banaras Hindu University and currently working as a professor in the Department of Environment Science, School of Earth Science, Central University of Rajasthan. Uh, through his vice chancellor, I got his contact and idea about his uh, research work. Uh, before joining uh, Central University of Rajasthan, Dr. Kumar was associated with National Physical Laboratory, Laboratory New Delhi, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, and BIT, Billa Institute of Technology. Uh, he has vast experience working on the influence of changing climate on snow and glaciers. That impact the availability of water resources in the Indian Himalayan region. He, he has a great experience and long CV is with me, but uh, we would like to prefer hearing directly from him about his experience in the glaciers. Professor Kumar, once again, I request you to kindly start your presentation. Uh, you have 30 minutes to make your presentation. And after that, we'll take the questions. Uh, thank you, Kapoor, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, I audible? please yeah. carry on, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me and giving this opportunity to 
talk on the day of uh, World Environment Day. This is very close to my heart to celebrate this Environment Day, though we have in the second half our own activities in the Central University of Rajasthan. There are lots of activities going on with some activities by the students apart from the lecture session and all. Thanks for this opportunity. Let me start my session. Uh, this, I'm going to talk about the changing climate impacts and its need to restore the ecosystem. So in this, I'm just changing. Just yeah. So our case is that the scenario until the scenario until a decade ago was the world was just looking at the economic status alone as a measure of the human development. So from the right of this slide, the countries that were less developed were called the developing countries or underdeveloped countries. They moved to the economic well-being and you have the very lighted cities and all that has become the countries that is the economically developed. So they were called as the advanced nation. So from here, why the things are moving? Let us have this one by one. So most countries of the North America and Europe, which had become industrialized at an earlier stage, have become economically more advanced. So developed nations not only exploited their own natural resources rapidly, but also used the natural resources of the developing countries. So they, they grow even longer, grow their even longer economies, larger economies. So this, you have a kind of investment that's coming to the developing countries or undeveloped countries. So now they are still shifting the pollution to the developing countries and underdeveloped, and they are enjoying still the economic well-being and benefits of it. So that's the way development progressed. The rich countries became richer while the poor countries became poorer. After some time, the developed nation has begun to realize that their lives were being seriously affected by the environmental consequences of development based on economic growth alone. So this is to be underlined. So they started also realizing that everybody is now realizing, so began from there. Developmental policies with only economic considerations originate serious environmental problems like the global warming, climate change, air and water pollution, improper waste management, deforestation, and a variety of other ill effects to the environment. That seriously affects people's well-being and their health. So this is a very famous picture of your earth. This was called Blue Marvel. This photo was taken from the NASA Apollo 17 mission. So this earth is how changing is we are going to look into this. So this earth has this atmosphere, very thin layer of atmosphere that you have. In this atmosphere, we have all your oxygen and other gases for your need. And what we are doing in this thin atmosphere, we are shipping 152 million tons of man-made global warming pollution into this thin cell of our atmosphere every 24 hours as if it, it, it were an open shiver. So think, this much pollution every 24 hours. So what we are doing. So with this greenhouse impact is being generated and the solar radiation that is coming on the earth, passing by your atmosphere, when it job by the earth surfaces, it is supposed to return back to the atmosphere. And that running back has been reduced because of this greenhouse and especially the carbon dioxide concentration. So see there were four radiation that were supposed to go back. The two were returned back. So this is showing that the energy is being trapped by this atmosphere because of your pollution and the greenhouse gas emissions. So what are the sources of this? The big source of this greenhouse gases are coal mining, industrial um, processes, you have the industrial agriculture, the land transport, the land fills, the forest burning, fertilization, crop burning, oil production, coal plants, and very importantly to note that the thawing form of frost. 
and thawing permafrost has taken place because of the warming that more and more warming is taking place more and more, more thawing thaw of the permafrost is taking place and from there the the methane that was trapped within the permafrost is also getting released another greenhouse gas emission the largest source of global warming pollution is the burning of the fossil fuel and see the billion metric tons of the carbon that has come to up to 10 billion metric tons by 2019 and the graph you will see is just increasing from where from 1950 onward 1975 onward is too high and further this is much more accelerated and has reached to the 10 billion tons of it now see with this carbon dioxide level of 2015 this is 400 ppm v and this is being increased to a level by 40 years of now that is supposed to increase to 600 and if this is going to increase by that you have seen here the temperature is in accordance with this uh, carbon dioxide concentrations so if this goes up, up this temperature will also rise and that rising we are looking at the top 24 greenhouse gas emitters are china and other states india coming on the third russia indonesia brazil japan and you have the list over here because i have limited time so i'll rush also from here but let us see india is becoming the third and the born to be the polluters of the greenhouse where do india's emission come from the major source of india's emission is coming from the energy sector that is 70.6% from here you have aviation and the shipping fuel 0.5% very small next is coming from the agriculture 21.9% industrial is 5.6% and waste improper management of the waste is giving 2% of the greenhouse so this is india's contribution for all from the different sectors so what is happening the facts that is happening now this is a graph that is showing you the global surface temperature anomaly and anomaly says how much is the deviation from the average values and the average has been taken from 1980 data to 2019 and this average has been taken as a zero value of from this zero value what are the changes so if you look into this before 1940 what is happening how all the anomalies are at the negative even sometimes it is minus 0.5 degree celsius of the anomalies were there but from 1940 to 1942 about 19 70 what is happening this anomaly is having positive and negative sometimes positive sometimes negative but after about 1980s this anomaly is always always positive 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 and this anomaly has gone to 1 degree celsius even so what does it mean that we have reached 1 degree celsius of the warming to the from the average level of the temperature so 1 degree celsius warming is already established and now we are moving towards the further warming and how how we are moving let us see what that so 19 of the 20 hottest year on record have occurred since the year 2001 so out of this 19 one uh, 20 hottest year only one was in the 1998 and rest of the 19 were in this century itself and if you like to see the top warming years of the five top warming years 2016 19 17 15 and 2018 and uh, i will not go into this discussion simply i will give you the answer which one is the hottest is the 2016 and this is in the chronology order highest to the lowest a plot of five numbers of the warming years and that all coming to the century the energy trapped by man made global warming pollution is now equivalent to exploding 500000 hiroshima atomic bombs Per day and every 365 days per year. So this energy is being released, trapped extra. That I I said that the greenhouse gas is trapping the energy, and this energy is equivalent to 500,000 atomic bomb explosion that took place on the Hiroshima and on the 365 days per year. And this energy, and if, if you multiply this energy with the 500,000, that is. every day being trapped on your earth surface so what is going to happen 
that is causing your global warming. So this is the major concern of the warming. And one degree Celsius warming on an average says that there are some places where you have 1.5 and 2 degree of the warming, while an average is here. The impact is very much visible. This is from the Saudi Arabia. Al Mazamah that has uh, received a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius on June 8, 2019. See, it's a very, very horrible condition. There are many other cities. Kuwait has received a temperature of 51 degrees Celsius in July 2017. And next you have in August, what happens? The birds in the cities died and fell from the sky from the heat exposure. Then you have 51.5 degrees Celsius temperature has been raised to on June 16, 2017 to another UAE. Nigeria is another cities, and this has further the European conditions is also becoming so warmer, and the condition you can see the miserable is becoming the summer. On May 19, 2016, India, the place is Faludi in Jodhpur, near Jodhpur, Jodhpur district itself in Rajasthan, set a new all time high temperature record by 51 degrees Celsius. So the North Pole has now experienced mid-winter heat waves three years in a row. You can see the polar region is also getting 2016, 2017, and 2018 heat waves over there. And we are worried about the heat waves in the tropical region, our countries and the tropics. Even the poles are experiencing this. What is happening further? The Arctic sea ice extent in last 1,500 years is decreasing by the surface ice extent in kilometer square is the unit. So this is also reducing sharply and see with an example how this is happening. At least 220 locations around the world set all time heat records in 2018. These are the different locations on the globe where we, this has rec recorded the all time highest temperature in 2018. The three locations in Alaska set all time heat records on July 4, 2019. And further to moving over here, not only the land surfaces, not only the polar region, even the global ocean temperature is again rising. And see again in the same fashion, we have seen the land surface temperature anomalies. See here again anomalies in, in the energy content of the ocean. So global heat temperature this anomaly is given 10 to the power 12 joule of the energy. And this gives you an idea that before 1990, this was having a negative anomalies of minus 15 into 10 to the power 12 joule of the energy uh, to the level of zero to 2000 meter depth of the ocean. But from here, it is after 1995, this started increasing with the heat content in the oceans and this has risked up to about 19 and 18 into 10 to about 12, 10 to 10 to about 22 joules of the energy. So such a rise and out of this, 2018 was the hottest year on record even for the ocean temperature condition. So from here to move the global ocean heat content because of this, the heat content of the ocean is also increasing and look into this. This has been plotted, the data is showing the heat content with the different level of the thickness of the uh, ocean from the top surface to the bottom. So top surface to the 300 meter, this, this color is showing. Again, rise from about 1985, 1990. This is all increasing, increasing. Even with the 300 to 700 meter gap of the ocean depth, this is also increasing. Even to the lower coming 700, 2000 meter, this is also increasing and the much bottom 2000 meters to the further lower is also showing increasing. So the entire ocean is coming warmer with the increasing years and very surprisingly to note that, that this The half of this increase has occurred in the less than 20 years. This 50% of this warming of the increase in the heat content of the ocean is in last 20 years. So it means 
the last 20 years that we have observed in the land surfaces that is becoming the hotter and hotter years and the same is impacting to the ocean heat content so similar impact is going around the globe either land or the water surfaces then there's a huge formations of this hurricane activities this is florence hurricane and this is disturbing your hydrological cycle evaporation precipitation and the runoff all is getting disturbed and the impact i'm going to see very quickly is here as the temperature increases the ocean evaporates more and more moisture is in the sky and more moisture in the sky means more cloud formations and more cloud formations more moisture content is the heavy rainfall condition in that case the warmer air can hold a lot of the more water vapor so with the more water vapor you will have another to see that every one degree additional temperature in the atmosphere the capacity of holding water vapor increases by 7% and we have already enough water vapor 5% more water vapor over the oceans than was last 30 years ago so already we have 5 degree more water vapor and 1 degree rise will enhance 7% of its own capacity. So more water vapor content in the atmosphere will so the downpours are getting to be bigger. And if the bigger downpours are over there, what is happening? This is very interesting to note over here is that from Hawaii to this California, there is an atmospheric river, not on the surface, even in the atmosphere, there's a river. Which river? That we have talked about the huge amount of the water concentration in the vapor form and that moves from one place to the other place like from Arabian Sea or from the Bay of Bengal this moves to the Himalayas and gives you the heavy rainfall so that cloud is your atmospheric river and more water vapor content is the bigger downpour and the flooding conditions and anything so those clouds having the more water vapor over there is a very dense thick cloud and this is going to be give the very heavy rainfall conditions to the location. Then with this cyclonic activities and the heavy rainfall, we have witnessed some of the in, uh, increasing frequencies of cyclonic activities in India itself. See the cyclone Amphon, Amphon or its landfall is in the Orisha and Bay of Bengal. The destruction of this cyclone is an, another example. This is the high heavy wind over here. This is the further destructions of the fanny cyclones that took place on 26th April 2019. And you have the destructive, uh, another cyclone fanny over here. So these are some of the examples that we have seen. This is again the Taukate cyclones. Very recently we witnessed this. And this was from the Arabian Sea developed. And this was where the worst condition to the Southern Indian locations. And from here to move another Yes, cyclones. Within 10 days, we have witnessed another, another cyclone from the Bay of Bengal, and this has hit the Orisha and the West Bengal conditions, and then further risk deeper into the Indian continent. But these are the kind of the disasters, and the alarm is being given by the nature to us, and what we need to do. That's the started from the very beginning of our pollution conditions, and this. This is some example from the Luciana parts of the southeast Louisiana experienced what one inch in 1000 years rainfall on August 11 to 13 of 2016 and this becomes a kind of the the highland everybody has no road only connectivity is your with the water route then the Argentina has witnessed a precipitation bomb dropped 4.9 feet of the hill in 15 minutes the hail storms activities. So the different kinds of the disaster are coming over here. Then the Tamil Nadu in 2015, this all your flyover is getting submerged. That's the flood because of the heavy downpour, heavy rainfall conditions. So the impact, another see the impact is very interesting to note over here that the Hurricane Harvey crossed waters in the Gulf of Mexico that were up to four degrees hotter than the normal condition. Four degrees Celsius hotter, it's too much. And that up to 200 meters of this deep. And this has developed only in 12 hours. So more hotter condition is prone to this. The Hurricane Harvey, August 26, 2017, 
This is the cyclone movement, it's an animation of the movement of the cyclone. And this shows that the harm intensified from a tropical depression to a category of four hurricane in just two days. So the starting of the cyclone is from the depression, deep depression, then cyclonic formation, deep cyclones and the super cyclones. So all these has taken in, in four hurricane in just two days to the level of hurricane, the super cyclonic activities. Then see some more. So this is unrestrained climate change means we will see many more harvests in future. With the concern, many more Amphon, many more Fanny, many more Taukate, many more Ijaz in future in Indian condition also. And these were some of the 2013 disastrous condition when the cloud was took place in the Kedarnath locations and this huge water flow, this is a picture from the Rishikesh. And if you can remember lots of casualty, tragedy and landslide were all kind of the disaster happening because of this. This is one of the example from this 2013 disasters that gave rise to the flood, flood, uh, flash flood conditions. And from here, if you'll see the disasters, how this is moving up, see. There are the geophysical disasters, that's the earthquake kind of the things is happening, but this is not upward too much. Some of the time there are some higher frequencies, otherwise this is almost constant. But what is happening to the next? Hydrological disasters are, see this graph of this blue one? This is thickening more and more. So hydrological disaster trend is upward. Then the meteorological disasters that we have talked about this, hurricane and cyclonic activities. This is also in upward, this green seat you see from 1982, 2012, this is also increasing. So the different varieties of the disasters, you can note it and this is increasing. So why? More events, why? Why, whether this is because of the climate change or this is more vulnerable people. So better reporting, is this the cause? So we have to look into why this is happening. So we started with this. This is one of the example of the earthquake activity that is taking place and maybe this, this disaster because of the landslide also. So what is happening over there? Then in the past 20 years, Four point four billion people, nearly two third of the world's population have been caught up in the natural disaster causing $2 trillion in the damage. Then it's far cheaper to prepare well for the disasters than to try to pick up the pieces afterward. So better to be prepared first and this will really save at least the lots of lives. May not save the properties, but preparedness will save you. The same extra heat that evaporates more water from the ocean is also causing bigger downpours for the flood and also evaporating more and more moisture from the land masses that pulls moisture even more quickly from the soil, causing longer and deeper droughts. So another concern is here. So this is the condition from the, uh, shown from the Brazil. This was water bodies and this water bodies has all reduced, reduced and shrinking, shrinking, see the cracks in the water bodies, soil masses is developed. So to the other location, you can further imagine. And several droughts we are also witnessing in the Indian condition too. Not only here, this is stopping. This is further impacting you. On the hotter years are typically have more fires. So you see from 1980 to 2018, the fire condition is also increasing. So another alarming is over here. The three most expensive wildfire in world history have happened in the last two years and that is 2017 and 2018 and this all has happened in the California with the three different forest campfire tubs fire and wolves fire Fort McMurray Alberta in Canada this was a kind of condition of the fire then see the entire Location, what is showing is that fire and smoke in eastern Russia is showing lots of this dot of red is that's the increase in the fire counts over this region. Then 
then the world could see up to 1 billion climate migrants another concern you have the the migrants or the refugees because of the the war conditions or any other things but because of the climate change the migration is taking place from the mountain people if they are not having proper adequate irrigation facilities or get food over there they are migrating to the villages villages people maybe because of the the agricultural drought conditions they are migrating to these cities so these are kind of a climate migrants because of the changing climate is the migration is taking place this has a report from the lancet very uh, prestigious journals that's the countdown report says this then you have every 1 degree celsius of the warming that rises the lightning strike also increases by 10 to 12% and lightning further causes lots of casualties that we are witnessing in every lightning incidences and coming in the news every year even in indian condition too worldwide extreme weather catastrophes has increased so this red is the extreme temperature drought is increasing with the years from 1980 to 2019 likewise see the flood and mud slide is further this blue bar is also becoming thicker and bigger and bigger that means this is also increasing with the time is passing away and this golden one is the storm condition this is also increasing from 1980 to the present 2019 scenarios so this all three catastrophes are also increasing and that's the impact of climate change further to see the glacier recession what is happening from the greenland sea what we have seen earlier was a glacier just just yes yeah, see this is a glacier and because of this melting taking place i have to just yeah so this glacier melting is now having the water bodies over there the lake formations and lake burst out is also taking place from the mountain region and the himalayas is written has witnessed very recently in the rishi ganga the flash flood conditions the kedarnath that we were talking about was a flash flood conditions so the glacier lake outburst flood is another kind of disaster that creates lots of the havoc in the, in the regions on the huge water over there the landslide a lots of loss on the properties and the life is bound to happen because of this then for the the arctic ice is melting from 1980 to see this is from 2007 so this is losing lots of ice cover over here the rate of the ice melt in the himalayas has also doubled since the year 2000 to the present time so this is one of the research in the himalayas in the ladakh region after one year we are witnessing to the different location up to this location this stake is of 2 meter long so here at this location 4 meter of the vertical ice thinning has taken place so this stake was to the ground level and after one year when we are going because of the melting of the ice this stake is exposed up so 4 meter vertical thinning has taken place to this location here 2 plus 1 3 meter of the vertical ice thinning has taken place so this is also showing increase that we have said that it has gone doubled in uh, in the present time if compared to the last 20 years so more melting of ice is taking place this is the work to know how much accumulation is taking place so the precipitation trend of the snowfall in the himalayas is also erratic and reducing so that is one concern and melting is becoming further higher so the balance between the the input of the snowfall over there that forms the glaciers and the melting that is taking place is also disturbed so this is a negative balance so less is the input and more is the melting so this is going to lose your water reserves that is the fresh water biggest fresh water reserve in the himalayas if you will say is uh, other than the polar region is over here so we are losing this reserve also so in future we are going to have the the perennial river uh, at risk because there are the ganga yamuna brahmaputra or the prani river is coming only because of the glacial melt water and there are several glacier that has already lost the smaller glaciers vanished out from this region that report is another uh, published by uh, uh, this saika madabad where we also worked for the ladakh region and there are the different country participation in this report for the research and these are the equipment by which you need to go in the himalayas and work over there then to see for the yeah 
these are the equipment instruments by which you need to work on the glaciers and ice and if when you are working on the himalayas this is your house so you have to stay in this harsh condition on the ice itself and to work over there for 15 days or a couple of weeks and this requires trekking up to 18000 19000 feet on the glaciers to estimate the input and the melting of the glaciers and then compute the water availabilities for the future and what is the health of the glacier and this is one of the result uh, uh, from the himachal himalaya that is now coming up into a publication from the very nature paper so uh, this has already been accepted so this graph you may match over there and the earlier figure you can also see over there so this is from there coming up very nice publication of nature coming up so this also this huge loss and there is a temperature change established relationship in this model over there so that's why this has been accepted in nature and the precipitation trend also has been shown that is reducing so this is a kind of a, a very good study in this himalayas coming up in the nature publication this is one of the example of the pictorial example from the pindari glacier of uttarakhand himalaya that falls in the kumaon himalaya this is the glaciers pindari very famous glaciers during the british period they used to visit this location so they you may have on the way of this trekking site you have the three pwd guest house over there this is a 45 km trek from the lohar khet to reach this location and people used to go in 15 uh, 3 days 15 15 km every day but we becoming a trekker we used to go in one and a half day and walk over there and come even sometimes in a day also very hard uh, trek is there sometimes you going up coming down to the river bed again climbing and moving so this glacier has shrunk to see the same angle photograph and this photograph is of 2006 and see this portion of all this glacier has all receded receded come to over here so too much of the recession has took took place to this to similar photograph and then we have <clears throat> this is the very famous glacier named gangotri and behind this you have this bhagirath peaks so this river originating from here is the location is called the gomukh and from gomukh this originate this river is called the bhagirathi river when this bhagirathi river joins with the alaknanda river at devprayag down to tehri this is named as a ganga from devprayag so before this is bhagirathi and this is bhagirathi because this is assumed that the bhagirath did all this meditation over here to bring the ganga river over here and these peaks were named with the bhagirath so bhagirathi peak 1 2 and 3 depending on the higher side of the height 1 to 3 has been named and the top 10 cities at risk because of the more melting of the snow and ice the sea level rise is over there another concern with the sea level rise top 10 countries of the world is over here where you will find that the kolkata and mumbai is also named in the top 10 countries which are vulnerable with the sea level rise further to this you will see you will see the top 10 cities at risk from the sea level rise in 2070 coming up in terms of the population risk earlier was so earlier was this risk is estimated in terms of the assets and the economic impact and this is in the terms of the population to be affected now in population to be affected kolkata is coming number 1 in the world and mumbai is coming number 2 then nearby countries you bangladesh dhaka is also too much vulnerable for this so from here to move another october 13 2014 us department of defense said this climate change will likely to lead to food and water shortages because the drought we have seen and we have seen in inundated conditions there are water shortages in summer so with this another pandemic is your disease even we are also struggling nowadays with the corona further disputes over the refugees and the natural disasters in region across the globe all are a kind of concerns and that we witness over here then the grain loss the yield loss will decrease so there has been an under recognition of just how sensitive crops are to heat and how fast heat exposure is increasing and reducing the crop grains not to be mature over there and the research says 
projected yield is going to decline by 7.4% for the corn with the temperature rise. Wheat is going to reduce in yield by 6%, rise by 3.2%, and soybean by 3.1%. And these four crops make up two third of the human caloric intake. So here another concern in your food security. Further, rising concentration of the carbon dioxide are threatening global nutrition by reducing the level of nutrients in your grain. So not healthy food. So not more immunity in your body. So more vulnerable to the impact of the viruses and the bacteria. So in food crops, like the rice and wheat and so I mean, the nutrition value is also reducing because of the increase in temperature. This kind of the maize are being produced the higher temperature and the drought can cause toxin accumulation in the plants and its livestock that may threaten the health of human and animals. So another concern of the disease is coming because of the low nutrient and the toxin conditions in your grains. So with all this, what we understand is the climate change is a medical emergency and we need to address like this. Then only we can have some solution from it. So the tropical disease. See, professor, professor I think we, we are running out of time. If you quickly. Okay, so I, I'll leave this. Five minutes. Okay, so I'm, I'm listening. So what we require is a kind of solution. We must change for this and this we are moving is here is if we destroy creation, creation will destroy us. Never forget this fact. So finally, ultimately, the top leaders started to think with these changes, the economic growth alone could not improve the life of a people. And in conclusion, we all should improve the better environment conditions for the better human life and best survival. So we have the solution in hand. So I'll show a few solutions quickly, that's the green energy. And in green energy, the global wind energy that we are also uh, exporting, uh, increasing in harnessing of it with the present time. Then we have lots of 40 times, the global wind energy could supply worldwide electricity consumption of 40 times over. So this we need to harness. Then solar energy, we also need to harness too much and from 1980 to 2019, the solar energy harnessing is increasing to the 600 gigawatt tons. And the cost of the crystalline silicon solar cell has reduced. So the cost is reducing when you are going to harness the solar energy. And you it's required to put every place a solar energy. And this, the Chilean solar market is increasing, increasing, and increasing, and increasing. So this is a kind of requirement to every country's solar market to increase and harness more and more solar energy. So with this, we have some solution in hand. Further, we have the enough solar energy is available from the earth that every hour to fill all the world's energy need for a full year. So only we need to harness it. The global community storage capacity is increasing nowadays. By 2040, we have a target of about 900 gigawatts to harness from the solar energy. The LED bulb is going to have the reduced consumption is a solution. So if more and more LED bulbs, so the dependency on the energy sector that about 76% is coming from uh, the greenhouse gases from the Indian sec uh, energy sector. If we are going to over here, so dependency on energy will reduce by that we can, we can have a solution in hand. The auto manufacturers are also moving towards the electrical vehicles. So this is a kind of solution. Further, you have a solution in hand is plantation of more and more trees. And this will give you the solution. Then you have think for your planet Earth that you have been this, this your children and grandchildren, mother Earth is our only home. And this has been borrowed from them. So we are the trustee. So we have to conserve these and we have to return back in a better sense. So your world depends on it. So we have to act to save our ecosystem and see this pretty polar bear is looking at us because of their, none of the fault, but they are also be, are in trouble because of our action. So we need to save. Another thing is that I want to quote is from the Mahatma Gandhi, be the change that you want to see in the world. So everybody has to 
come forward and work for it another quote i want to show it from the darwins that it said that it is not the strongest of the species that survives nor the most intelligent that survives it is the one that is most adaptable to change whether we are adaptable to this much of the changes that i have shown in the different types of the disasters and if we are adaptable to change accordingly probably we can survive otherwise we can think of it what is going to happen i have few few lines to share over here again so nature is a great experimenter and it discards the species that is not supporting the whole so it is constantly exper experimented over millions of years and as we know it has discarded the dinosaurs and many other species few species have survived for 200000 years few of them have also survived for 1 to 20, 10 to 20 billion, million years but the question is how sure are we about the success of our species that the human are we going to survive forever it's a question for us it means that we need to be beneficial for whole then only we can survive forever are we doing the beneficial for whole our acts are in the direction if we are not going to be beneficial for the whole the nature would discard us like the dinosaur has been discarded thus we need to have a conservation with the planet earth what could be the message from the planet for us if you will ask the planet planet will say i am very unhappy with your act we are more damaging even we are causing greater calamities we are being cruel to this planet of ours we are not being beneficial to nature as whole mind it the whole inverted comma only we can survive for longer which has been proved again and again by our act so we are not thinking in holistic about the entire ecosystem of the globe so choice is ours but not to blame the nature nature has said if you are thinking for the whole you can survive for longer so with this i acknowledge this also some of the slides is from the climate reality project of al gore where i am also working as a climate reality cops in this together and this is the thanks to everyone for your patience hearing thank you very much thank you sir it's open for thank you thank you professor uh, professor rajesh uh, it's nice to hear from you and uh, in fact we would have loved to continue with your presentation for a longer time but of course sir. So, so it was for a longer time because sometimes i i constrained yeah uh, perfect sir. but in future definitely we will trouble you for more and more presentation and sharing your experience with our fraternity once again thank you professor rajesh uh, thank before, you sir before we move on further uh, for the concluding remarks by uh, dr ds mishra uh, i i have noted down few questions from chat box uh, one is from uh, anjali sharma she she has uh, a question uh, for professor pandey could you suggest critical reason research areas for integration of environmental restoration agenda into urban and regional planning this is addressed to professor pandey oh, okay. one one probably yeah please bolie uh bolie -huh. please you can respond to it then yeah. i will take the second presentation was there was that was there in my presentation but because i had overshot the time i couldn't show the details of that so environmental education is the critical area which is required i mean the right kind of so that that dispels the notions the kind of people have like that elephant and blind man story everyone has got everyone is living in their own narrow windows so in order to get out of that window and come in the open then we need that proper environmental education that's the critical area where we need new to work on okay so thank you kapoor sir yeah next yeah uh, another another question is from uh, mr lalit kumar 
uh, this can be responded by any of you. Uh, he says, Prathvi ko bachane ke liye. He has written in Hindi. So I am repeating in Hindi itself. Prathvi ko bachane ke liye shahri shetro mein parasitiki ko prathmikta dete huye kya upaya karne chahi. Probably it means that uh, to save the earth, particularly in uh, urban areas, what yeah. are the ecological parameters? What has to this problem? 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 What has to this Sir, which question is there? Just Prathvi ko bachane ke shari shetro mein prasthiti ko prathmikta dete hue kya upaya karna chahiye? Prathvi ko bachane ke liye shari shetro mein prasthiti ko prathmikta dete hue kya upaya karna chahiye? I've already shown over there the maximum greenhouse emission is coming from our energy sector and energy dependency. We have to switch to the green energy and for green energy we have enough reserve available in the solar form, wind form, and that we have to move further. That's the only solution. And the greenery have to increase in the all the, the township, more plantation, and these are the, the solutions of it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Professor Pandey, would you like to share something? Go ahead. I have a question in Hindi, so I will give you a little bit of Hindi. The main problem is that I will listen to Jai Shankar Prasad. So you will understand that in that time, what will happen in that time? और अभी हम लोगों ने परिस्थिति के साथ क्या किया है वो चार पांच लाइन है और जिन्होंने भी जिन महानुभावों ने वो सवाल पूछा है उनके लिए थोड़ा सा वो अच्छा रहेगा सुन लेंगे मिस्टर ललित कुमार हां ललित कुमार जी वो जयशंकर प्रसाद की एक कविता थी वो जो पर्यावरण पे अगर उनको बोलना रहता मेरी जगह पे अगर उनको बोलना रहता तो क्या बोलते बुलबुले सिंधु के फूटे बुलबुले सिंधु के फूटे नक्षत्र मालिका टूटी नभमुक्त कुंतला धरणी दिखलाई देती लेटी छिलछिलकर छाले फोड़े मलमलकर मृदुल चरण से धुलधुलकर बह रहे जाते आंसू करुणा के कर से इस विकल वेदना को ले मैंने सुख को ललकारा वह एक अबोध किंचन बेसुध चैतन्य हमारा अभिलाषाओं की करवट फिर सुप्त व्यथा का जगना सुख का सपना हो जाना भीगी पलकों का लगना दैट इज अ स्टेट ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल अफेयर्स ग्लोबली और इसलिए ही इक्वल सिस्टम रिस्टोरेशन करना बहुत जरूरी है और राजेश कुमार जी ने बोल ही दिया ग्रीन डेवलपमेंट ग्रीन डेवलपमेंट और ग्रीन मैनेजमेंट होना चाहिए थैंक यू सर वी हैव टू टू मोर क्वेश्चंस वन इज फ्रॉम फ्रॉम मिस्टर जैकब ईसो ही इज फ्रॉम केरला एंड ही इज टॉक्स अबाउट दैट ही इज डायरेक्टली एड्रेसिंग टू प्रोफेसर पांडे ओके urban and rural is interdependent as you said in your presentation yeah. so what will be your take for integrating rural and urban methodology mm -hmm. for development okay so see in rural area as i told you in the beginning actually at the moment the relationship between urban and rural environment has become fox and rabbit relationship because the foxes are surviving all the food material even textile material even materials required for our residential construction and all they are coming from rural areas what we can do is we can develop the rural areas as much as the urban areas are and this will reduce the following things First, the migration from rural. Actually, Kerala is lucky. Kerala, that divide is not there as it is there in northern states. I don't know whether he has visited northern states or not. Kerala is that way lucky. Like Kerala, if other states also follow the same kind of development plans, where rural area looks almost as good as urban areas, and that divide should get decreased. So we should have even malls in uh, rural areas. We should have Wi-Fi networks in uh, rural areas. We should have educational institutions in rural areas. We should have hospitals. At the moment, what is most important is we should have hospitals, well-built hospitals in urban areas so that that rural load, it is actually it is better for urban um, area also. The rural load of infection will not be shared by Nagpur. Because recently, the data of Nagpur was the urban inf infectivity was reducing. And in the Nagpur hospitals, the rural infectivity was much higher than the urban infectivity. So to keep, as I told you, 
सो एज टू स्माइल आवर सेल्फ वी मस्ट कीप द नेबर्स इन गुड ह्यूमर तो अपने अर्बन एरिया शुड हैव ए नेवरली ट्रीटमेंट विद द रूरल एरियाज एंड दे शुड मेक एवरी अटेम्प्ट टू डेवलप द रूरल एरियाज एज मच एज वी हैव डेवलप्ड दैट्स व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट थैंक यू वेरी वेरी सर थैंक यू थैंक यू लास्ट लास्ट क्वेश्चन आई एम टेकिंग फ्रॉम डिमिशा पॉल दिस इज अगेन एड्रेस टू मिस्टर पांडे could you kindly elaborate a bit more on connection between sdi and high ecological impacts mm-hmm. as presented in your one of your graphics right so does it mean that we should not aspire for improving sdis to conserve environment no it doesn't mean that it only means that we should change the definition of sdi the definition of sdi is not proper actually if you see but in the present circumstances also the best example lies in the present circumstances people it to the parameters four parameters which sdi has economy employment um, education and health see many people died who were much economically well placed also so it doesn't matter whether you would be developed and not so most of many people who had lot of wealth also expired then people who had better employment the corona virus did not distinguish between who is employed or who is not employed so better employment also cannot be an indicator of development then better education many educated people, intellectuals also we lost many doctors also so even education could not prevent us from um, protect us from the disaster so finally what is most important is health is the most important parameter of development and we should concentrate on the health sector i will tell you the best example is we have five gyanendriyas and five karmendriyas and if you those five gyanendriyas and five karmendriyas are synchronized it's like an orchestra music orchestra if the one fellow also is not synchronized with the rest of the group you will not like the music similarly hum health music is like this if any of our organs is not functioning the way it should function if it loses the kind of biorhythm ecological biorhythm it is disturbed with we will have lot of problems the best development definition is that the synchronization between our gyanendriyas and karmendriyas and we will be developed mahatma gandhi probably didn't have those first three parameters but he was more developed than many of the people who had who had lot of finances than he he had or lot of education than he had so that's the view lot we take the example of vivekananda also he was more developed than many other people who are wealthier than that more educated than that so our human development index definition needs to be revamped and they do all those exercises and finally say that bhutan is the happiest country you know then but they don't follow bhutan they say finally bhutan is the happiest country but they will not follow bhutan so this is the paradox okay so thank you very much for this thank question you, sir thank you uh, i hope uh, you have addressed uh, all the questions raised by participants uh, i am slightly extending what you said about the gyanendriya uh, this is one area where we have to think globally and mm-hmm. address the situation also globally if like in pandemic situation we are if one country is doing very good and others are not doing that much so the still the disease will remain yeah so same is the case in uh, in terms of uh, development r- restoring the ecosystem that is the reason even the U- U- united nations they have uh, decided the theme for 2021 but they said that it will be for the period of 10 years that is one decade till the end of the achieve, achieving the uh, sustainable development goals that means till 2030 so everyone has to act now it is true across the world so that that is the crux of the whole issue uh, now i request dr ds meshram to give his concluding remarks on this webinar dr b s mishra thank you mr kapoor uh, can you hear me yes sir yes sir, yes, sir you are audible please okay. uh, we have already shoot the time or shoot the time rather so i will not 
uh, elaborate the things. But uh, I will also not give the concluding remarks because it is very difficult to give the concluding remarks because two very distinguished speakers have given their philosophies, their policies, what they have done, their experiences, and they have also given certain alternatives which can be practiced in our physical planning also. I would have really like to learn more from them. Uh, and we were really interested because some of the cases referred by them were really, really very useful and very elaborate and required to be followed and accepted. Uh, I, I remember when I was in the class 12 in Vishwasira after before joining the Vishwasira Regional College of Engineering, I remember there were the made easy, uh, made easy questions were there. For example, mathematics made easy, chemistry made easy. See, these both the speakers have made environment and ecology made easy and we are really, really benefited from their speeches, from their talks and from their experiences also. I would We have, Sir, you, you unmute yourself. You are muted, sir. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I will be only taking few points from both the speakers because they are very important for, as a physical planner. First one is that the Dr. Pandey has said, create the malls in the rural areas. Really, this is uh, worth uh, practicing or worth implementing, worth experimenting. Reason being, if you locate our malls in the rural areas, people would like to go for their shopping and other facilities as far as the malls is concerned in the rural areas. Here, I would also like to uh, share, there was a scheme of the Pura, provision of urban infrastructure in the rural areas so that the bias between the rural, rural areas and the urban areas can be reduced. Ultimately, we are practicing Dr. Pandey as far as the physical planning is concerned. We call it as a rural urban continuum. And okay. this, is, this is what we are practicing and that is what you are emphasizing as far as the physical planning education is also concerned. Uh, well, you have also given the example of the ratio of the industrial industrialization has to be in the balanced way if it is much more uh, then it is going to create a problem. Uh, you have given the example of the salt. If you add the double the salt, then the dishes will not be uh, not be eatable also. That is what you have said. You have also given one very important thing that is for the problems of India, we are trying to find out the solutions abroad. Really very well said. I really admire you. This is not only as far as the environment is concerned, but this is what is happening as far as the urban development is also concerned. Instead of finding the indigenous solutions, we wanted to bring the solutions from the European, from the European countries. Reason being, that holds good as per their culture is concerned, their norms and standards are concerned, their economy is concerned, but that don't hold good as far as the India is concerned because our culture is different, uh, our norms and standards are di different, our economical status are different. So practicing the things which are really experienced and which are very well gone as far as the European countries is concerned may not be workable as far as the India is concerned. Reason being, there cannot be the one jacket fits all solution as far as the urban development is concerned. Perhaps it may also be true as far as the environment is concerned. Dr. Rajesh Kumar has given us the sources of the greenhouse gases that is specifically lies in the coal mines, oil production, and there are so many others. As far as the Indian emission sources are concerned, he has specifically said that the energy is the source which is more than 70%, and then next is the energy, is the uh, agriculture is 21%. He has also given us the Himalayan ecology, and, and, and he has really underlined uh, which I would also like to underline that is better to be prepared for the disaster than taking the actions for restoring it. That is very, very important. He has, uh, he has also lamented that in the top 10 cities, risks for sea level rise is Kolkata and Mumbai will be really required to be taken into the consider, uh, required to be consideration, uh, required to be taken into the consideration. Well, uh, as far as 
as far as uh, uh, as far as uh, yeah right uh, let me see yeah uh, as far as the world environment day is concerned mr khodankar has underlined few few aspects of the world environment day and the theme is ecosystem restoration uh, they have also said and they have noted specifically that we have destroyed half of the wetlands as far as the India, as far as the whole country uh, as far as the whole universe is concerned 50% of the world's cor uh, coral uh, reefs have been lost and 90% of the coral reefs will be lost by 2050 if the adequate actions are not taken and then they have recommended that we must now fundamentally rethink in our relationship between the natural ecosystem well both the key speakers have really given us the well the well food for thought and specifically what can be the role of the physical planners in the, both the both the talks given by the experts can we really avoid acquiring the good agriculture land so that it cannot be brought in the urban development that is what is required to be uh, really underlined and this is what required to be practiced by all of us uh, all of our physical planners Re for reducing the pollution from the traffic and transportation we have to devise ways and means specifically promote the eco friendly or environmental friendly modes of the transport that is cycles and the rickshaw maybe for the short trips maybe pedestrians by providing the footpaths in in urban in urban areas you see that the if the motor motorized vehicles comes the first casualty the footpaths that is what required to be reversed and the predominance is required to be given to the pedestrians there is another source that is the solid waste management so which really very much uh, very much dis disturbing the environment and that is what is required to be consider that it dispose collection sorting out and disposal and conveyance these are required to be taken into the considerations and then the provision of the green belts earlier we were experiencing experiencing and we are propagating then the green belts around the town should be created here now in the present circumstances perhaps you have to really th think in terms of providing the green spaces and the green belts much more so that we can restore the ecosystem Uh, well, I would like to have said much more, but here I would like to stop before I, we have already shoot up the time. Thank you very much, the organizers, for giving me the opportunity to the president, Mr. N. K. Patel, Mr. Khodankar, Secretary General ITPI, and Mr. Kapoor, Pradeep Kapoor, who has really been managing all this thing. Thank you very much to each one of you, and of course, my thanks are due to the both the key speakers, those who have done very well. It was really the eye opener for both of us as far as the environmental considerations are concerned, and of course. thanks to the participant those uh, have really given the suggestions and the raised the questions thank you very much thank you sir uh, there are uh, many many messages from participants to both the speakers uh, they have appreciated the presentations and uh, they have quoted it is a very very knowledgeable and informative presentations made by both the speakers dr j s pandey and professor dr rajesh kumar so i extend thanks to both of them uh, please extend our thanks also to the participants just, just for for the information of all the participants the recording of the webinar would be uploaded on itpi website because there were some suggestions to share the recording so we are putting this on itpi website anybody can see on that okay i think that uh, satisfies all the queries raised by the participants so i pass on to uh, secretary general mr khodankar thank you very much kapoor sahab now i am uh, i have a uh, customary duty to propose a vote of thanks that i will uh, quickly wind up uh, friends on the conclusion of today's world environment day program i extend my sincere thanks to professor dr d s meshram for grazing the occasion and giving his concluding remark in fact his presence among all of us planners is always a matter of pride for us i extend my sincere thanks to the two eminent speakers dr j s pandey and dr rajesh kumar who have enlightened us with their views on the subject 
and for agreeing to give this talk at the short notice my thanks are also due to president itp ashri nk patel for sharing his views and shri pradeep kapoor ji past secretary general for his all out support and organize, in organizing this uh, webinar and managing the event my sincere thanks to all the learned and esteemed participant who have participated in the event and also have raised very relevant questions i hope today's event makes us more enlightened for our duties towards the mother earth and makes us more responsible and concerned towards the environment thank you very much thank you all